Today, I want to introduce you to one of the most talented photographers I know, Ryan Young. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add more applause so it'll sound like there's more people clapping yeah. instead of yeah, just yeah. awkward, just silent. Just we actually go way back to high school, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, in our little town called Benicia in Northern California. Nobody knows where that city is. We both kind of linked up because we were both like taking pictures. Uh, we both had like the original Canon Rebel yeah. uh, SLR. Like I think I once like went up on the roof with like a $10 light that we got from Home Depot and like shined it down yeah, and you like stood there that. with a skateboard and then like breaking into like abandoned buildings and stuff. Like, yeah, that yeah, was a good time. For yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah, little 6.3 megapixel rebel yeah i missed uh, that camera good to see that you've been killing it in the photography world you've been doing it professionally right and like what are some of the magazines you've been shooting for i work a lot with like espn magazine slam new york times uh, popular mechanics wired pretty wide range everything from like tech science publications to sports i'm not surprised that sports is like a big part of it because like when we were in high school you were just like always photographing uh your friends skating and i remember hearing you photograph for like france world and at the time i was like one of the biggest like skate magazines right yeah so that must sure. been sick yeah that was awesome you guys have to check out his instagram like i love your photography style. It seems like you put a lot of thought behind like the story behind each photo. Like every time I see a photo, it doesn't seem like just a just a pretty picture. You know, it seems like it goes a little bit deeper than that. Yeah, I kind of like to tie a lot of photos together. When I'm commissioned to cover a story or something, it's like I'm looking at little bits and details of the whole scene. There's the portrait, there's the opening landscape, it's sort of like video minded mm -hmm. in a way, but that's Shit, which is basically gonna sound like beep beep once yeah, this is yeah. done editing. Yeah. But from mid nineties, yeah. he's one of the characters in there. I don't know anything about sports, so you could have some of the most famous athletes on here. I wouldn't even know. <laughs> well, here's like, like that's yeah, that's Lance Stevenson. He's on the Los Angeles Lakers, and uh, he's hilarious. He's like beyond a basketball player for me. Like he's always dancing and like doing like weird things on the court. And I, I like weirdos on the court. They kind of bring some joy to the game. It's not so robotic. I mean when he's hitting a three he's doing like like an air guitar on the court even though they're down by like 20 it's like <laughs> so slam magazine clay thompson that's a dope shot right there dude that's like one of the best things that's ever happened that that probably is one of my favorite shoots of all time yeah for sure i was like i'm a huge warriors fan and that was my first cover it was an email like hey are you available to shoot like clay thompson for the cover of slam magazine and like, I was like yeah like, for sure. It's like, I didn't ask about rates. I didn't ask about anything. Yeah. I was like, yeah, absolutely. Like, where is it? When is it? You know? And they told me when it was. I'm like, a day before my birthday? This is insane. Like, I could, maybe I should just, like, retire after this, you know? I don't, I don't think it's going to get higher than this. And I love Clay. Like, he's, he's the best. He gave me a loose idea of, like, what they wanted out of it, mm -hmm. which is, like, Clay Thompson on a lawn chair. And like the hardest part of like getting the shoot together was finding a 70s style lawn chair that fit a 6'7 dude and didn't look like a toy chair. Like <laughs> I, went, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, like I went to like, <laughs> I went to like three different department stores. I went to two prop houses. Like everything was just like, just too small for that style, you know? Like I couldn't find that exact one, the, like photo editors, like I believe in you, you got this. You know where they have them? Walmart. <laughs> really? That's where yeah, you got that's it? where I got it, it was Walmart. It didn't really matter what colors they were. I just like really, cause I could always manipulate that after, but I, I just needed something with that pattern and like that look. That's awesome. And I, and I love the shot. This is very much your style where it's like natural daylight and just a, a pop. Did you strobe that? I did, yeah, I put like two, two magnum reflector heads on top of each other because it was like we we're shooting directly into the sun no diffusion like nothing nothing like that had to match like hard light with hard light yeah he was awesome in person too like he was just super patient and down to do whatever i wanted so do you get kind of nervous like going up and meeting and shooting like celebrities yeah it's like wearing off a little bit now i think like before i would have so much anxiety that i would just like need to eat a piece of bread or something before i'd feel sick almost right but, yeah like, i don't know i think that's just what happens when you do something more like yeah you've but, done it enough yeah. times to where you're kind of like not so stunned yeah right yeah like we're not gonna be best friends i need to like get in here he's gonna see like maybe five to ten more of me this week we can be friendly but like i got a job to do so i have to like get in there get his stuff ready to go and like it's every time with these people like sports people music people like they're so much more friendly when you're like oh we're good we got what we need and then they're down to talk for a bit and hang out but i just know that like i need to do my job quickly because like they're very important you know and like they're gonna see so many photographers and video people that right 
Uh, there's no time to like be finicky or indecisive. Or right, for whatever. sure. Just doing it more and more. Now I'm a little bit more comfortable with like, okay, don't try to shoot everything. Like shoot like two to three concepts and then that's it. Well, that's definitely one thing I've noticed is like when you're working with important people, my primary focus becomes like trying to save them time because they'll mm -hmm. come in and they'll leave. And like I've had shoots that were like expensive. Yeah. And then like we have everybody ready and we're spending tens of thousands of dollars per hour essentially. Yeah. And then like they just show up late or something. And yeah. to them, it doesn't really matter. Get yeah. them in and out quick and not like try to just keep them there for as long as possible. Yeah. Like that's much appreciated by them. Yeah. And I think like, when you start to eliminate certain thoughts, like going into a shoot like that of like, well, what can we talk about to loosen this up? Like, there's no time to talk. Like, let's go, you know right. what I mean? Like, of course, I'm gonna talk to Wiz Khalifa or like any like famous person I'm shooting for as long as like they're willing to, but like, I'm, I just now am prepared to move very quickly. And if they right. give me more, like, I'm so thankful, but you know. You're one of the few photographers I know that can shoot like midday and still make it look like really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously the ideal like dawn or dusk. Like those are like ideal times and, and golden hour, like great times to shoot, but it's not always the case. And I think like what turned me on to that kind of snappy aesthetic is like Martin Parr's work. He just made a lot of photos like with like on cam strong on camera flash, like very colorful photos early in the color photography game where color photography was used as like fine art stuff. I would prefer dawn, dusk, you know, golden hour, but when I'm given an assignment that is happening at like 1 p.m., like you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? <laughs> do you still photograph a lot of skateboarding related stuff or have you kind of moved out of that scene? I've kind of moved out of it, but yeah, I still like to do it. Like if a, if a buddy of mine, a close friend's like, dude, I got this trick that I want to get, like, I love it. So if I wanted you to photograph me doing a rad trick outside right now, you down? Down, let's do it. Let's I got do my it. cameras. Hey, can you kick foot? Oh yeah, totally. I mean like, easy. First trick I learned. Here, check it out. Are you actually supposed to land on the board after you flip the board? Is yeah. that how it works? Oh, okay. I didn't know I was supposed to get back on the board too. Okay. I landed on the board. I think I just need to see you do it. That, that looks pretty easy. I, I, I think I could do that. Three more, I'm not gonna waste all day here. I know a better trick on Ollie. Those are really hard. How did I do? Am I a pretty good skater or? No, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, you were good. Yeah, I was good? Yeah, okay, you are good. Cool. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I started getting a little self-conscious there, I wasn't sure. With a little bit of Photoshopping, I think I could look like a pro, right? Yeah. I learned that trick from you where if you're filming some skate footage and like after every good take, you would actually put your hand over the lens. It's like, that. <laughs> you do that. Yeah, and back that. in the day when there was only tapes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you just keep rewinding and looking until you just see that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You don't good. want to miss tricks. I mean, friendships have been tested <laughs> and tears have been shed over, over lost tricks. Well, first of all, Photography itself is kind of a riskier industry to enter. You must be glad that you've been able to succeed at it and make it your career for over 10 years now. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it's it's tough. And I knew that it was when I was in school and the way that all these social platforms have, have changed the industry, um, I've had to change my attitude towards it. I've had to evolve with it. It is, it is tough. I mean, it's tough to do anything freelance. I think any, I shout out to all the freelancers out there that are, are doing your own thing. That's tough. And I think like the longer you're in it, the better you are with dealing with like the high highs and the low lows. Like I used to, when I'd get a job, be like, oh yeah, like I get a new camera, I get new lighting, get like fancy new grip stuff and like all that. And now I'm like, oh, you better calm down. Like put that away for taxes. Like winter is coming. It's going to be slow. You know, like I, I just know whenever it's super high that it, it can go just as low and like slow. I can go from shooting two to three times a week to not shooting for a month, which is like terrifying. You know, it's, it is, it is hard, but I think I've just been a little bit smarter with purchases. And that's definitely something that you learn very quickly with freelances. Even if you get like a good gig or see some success, like you better yeah. reinvest that or make sure you don't just go and spend it all. Yeah. It's, um, it's endless with our industry. So you're always like getting yourself out there. Huh? Yeah. That's how it's been since day one. I, I basically, I took a trip out to New York. All the, most of the magazines are out there. Uh, and I had like five to 10 publications that I 
I always wanted to shoot for while I was in school. There was like New York Times, like Esquire, GQ, Spin when they were a bigger magazine at the time, Rolling Stone, publications like that. I always like really respected the photography and was really like, I go to New York, I email them a few days before and if they have time to meet with me for like two, two minutes, like I'm stoked. I'll go up there and share my book and talk about my work. And so you have your agents now, but you're still always on the grind. Oh, always. Yeah. yeah. I think more so than ever. It's like, I mean, just the way social media works and the way that we're hired, it's like I'm having to adapt to how that how that works in this industry, because you can really be irrelevant in a few months, like the amount of like content and talent out there. It's like you constantly have to be reaching out and letting these people know that you're still shooting, you're still making work and inspired because there's a lot of us prior to social media. You, when you got your foot in the door, it was a little bit more consistent. Um, but now I've just kind of seen like the roller coaster more so than ever. So you're seeing a huge impact in the photography world by social media. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, photo editors, they look at Instagram now as like your portfolio. I understand the concept and I'm becoming less stubborn to it. But for me, when Instagram came out, like I put my, I put crazy stuff up. My friends drunk doing dumb stuff. Like <laughs> it was like, I didn't think about it as like a, like a curated platform. And I was right. super stubborn about it. I was like, no, go to my website if you want to see my stuff. But that's just the world we, we live in now. And, and, and what I've heard about companies hiring certain photographers, like if they have a lot of followers, if they, if they look really branded on Instagram, it's kind of, um, it's just kind of the way it works. So the number of followers you have on Instagram is now like actually having a big influence on getting work and all that now? I would I would absolutely say so. And I think like, I, I mean, I'd be a whole lot busier if I had more followers. Okay, everybody <laughs> go handle right here. Go follow him. You'll go check out his photography. You will not regret it. I promise you guys. Thank you. Yeah, I guess I don't put myself out there as much there. I'm more traditional in getting work by like the promos, the meetings. Like, right. Just yeah. the way I was taught and the way that I think that it, you know, I would like to get work. You just go up to the building, you just knock on a window like, hey, hey, show a couple of your prints like through a window. <laughs> and then they just kind of just like... <laughs> Short end of it, yeah, it's kind of how it, it, it feels sometimes at the end of the day. But no, it's I spent a lot of time making promos with a graphic designer on, on a certain body of works. So once that's finished and that's made, I will make a mailing list of people that I really, really f want to send this stuff to. I'll send it to them and then a few weeks Later, I'll, you know, I'll book a flight to New York and I will reach out to like as many people as I can think of for meetings. Uh, you don't carry around like a camera backpack. This is like your case. You got a yeah. roller. Yeah, I have a, I have so many bags. It's ridiculous, but this is probably the one I use for most of my jobs that don't require flying. This is what I'm rolling with. All right, let's, yeah. let's see what's in there. That's not even in my world. I don't even know what that is. What am I looking at? <laughs> You're looking at a Pentax 645Z. Uh -huh. It's rad because for a medium format, you can really shoot it fast. Those, those older like digital backs, I feel like were really slow. They'd miss focus. You'd need to shoot tethered because the screens were so bad. But this one, like it has a really good view, like screen on the back. So you can see, you know, like how your exposure is and yeah. treat it like a Canon pretty much. That's awesome. This, and this is yeah. digital. Yeah, it's digital. Oh, wow. I have a few lenses for it. I only brought this one. I think I like shooting with the fixed lenses on here. With a camera like this, I don't need a quick like 24 to 70. If I use this camera, I typically like have a subject that's going to hang out and like Right. This time. I'm not going to be speeding around. Like, for example, the Clay Thompson shoe, did you use something like this or? No, because un unfortunately, the like the biggest downfall for this camera is the sync speed. I can't use hypersync. Oh, so OK. It's like one one twenty fifth is the. Oh, the OK. Flashing Got speed. it. Yeah. So and I was using strobe that day and like shooting into the sun. So I have another setup with my Canon that I can shoot at any, sh at any shutter speed with my lights. Ah, got it. So I see. So the strobe's just a little bit too slow and you would have to have that shutter speed kind of yeah. slower than you would need it to. Yeah. I would okay. have had to melt him with some hot lights. Like it would have been brutal to like right. shoot. Oh yeah. Stuff. In that daylight, you would have need something so powerful. Yeah, like a mirror, <laughs> like a mirror or something. Yeah. Like, it would have been a horrible experience for him. That's cool that you're also thinking about like the subject's perspective too. Like you don't want to make sure. them miserable during the shoot. And so what else you got in there? Huh? 5D Mark IV, should... finally something I recognize. <laughs> <laughs> the 7200, the version three. It's rad. Like shooting backlit stuff's great. There's less 
chromatic aberration. I think when you were first starting out, like professionally, you were starting out with like a 60, right? I think that's yeah, the last camera I yeah. remember you having. I like that camera. It was kind of like, I feel like the, the secret killer, you know? Everyone was like, you need a Mark III, but there was this other like full frame camera that was a thousand dollars less. Right, and yeah. And like, I, side by side, they looked, they look very similar. The biggest jump was when I got the new 24 to 70. Uh -huh. I rocked that camera forever. I still have it actually. It just made sense to not have a Mark III. I skipped that whole generation. I didn't, I didn't get that one. Right, yeah. And you did a lot of pretty big jobs with that 6D, right? Yeah, I made that 6D work for sure. I think I had it for like two or three years of shooting editorial jobs. Yeah, I mean, once you get to know how to use a camera, even if yeah. it's like not the most expensive, decked out one and you can still do a lot with it as long as you know what you're doing absolutely i mean i obviously love the mark IV, but like i could shoot a lot of things on like a canon rebel oh yeah you know for as sure long as you have a fully manual slr like you're good at yeah. directing people and you have good engagement to your subject and you have good taste like you can nail it i've always noticed that you're less like gear but you're very much like yeah this will do this will do the job i needed to do yeah uh, you know and it's funny how that works right like it, it, it's it's really you think that way a lot too you're like a, i try like to macgyver for sure. <laughs> but like it's funny I, I got hell up at gunpoint and had these really expensive strobes taken from me like i had i had these like waterproof Holy like ellen crap. chromes like ranger packs stolen from me and it was one of the best things that could happen to me i mean i had insurance and everything so <laughs> so which is what you should have for sure <laughs> if you're a professional photographer you should have insurance hell up at gunpoint these things were stolen from me and i ended up just buying these like small flash points that you can get on ba b and h like and when they're cheaper strobes that means the modifiers are cheaper everything's cheaper and i found myself I think lighting stuff more with like smaller, cheaper flashes than I would with these big Ellen chromes because I would need help. I mean, like, yeah, you, you need, need a, assistance. You like, need assistance. Uh -huh. Yeah, assistance. You know, you want to J hook it. You don't just leave like a two thousand dollar strobe pack on the ground. Like, there's just more you have to do with that. So most times I would like if I was in a hurry and there was a shoot that was kind of running behind, I would just ditch him and then go natural with some bounce. But I feel like when I got these like smaller. Uh, these smaller flash points, which the ones that I got were kind of like, they were, they were like Q flashes. When I got those, like they were just, it was just easier to bust them out and just, just use them really quickly, bounce them off things. And well, a gunpoint. Yeah. Like w where were you? So I was, uh, Oakland? it wasn't, it was in 2000. <laughs> it was pretty close. I was, it was in 2014. I, at the time had a torn ligament in my foot. So I had a boot on. And I'm shooting my friend do a skate trick in Richmond. Like these people have no idea which Richmond we're Richmond, talking okay, about. So but yeah, no, I it's, was born it's, in, it's, I was born in Richmond, and Richmond is pretty. It can be pretty hood in certain yeah. certain parts, right? Yeah, like, it could be. It like, could be it's just like rough. it's it's yeah. kind of rough. Um, I was I was lighting a trick, and then I had like a car come down this like weird like pathway where a car shouldn't come down. I kind of thought that was weird and it almost hit my light stand and I was like kind of annoyed. It kept driving and then another car came by and I was like, that is super weird. This is like a running trail. Like what are these cars doing here? And then I see them backing up and then I grab my light stand and I have my camera around my neck and I'm like, dude, this sucks. I gotta like relight this thing, pull back. And then this kid, he looked like he was like maybe, maybe 14, 13 or 14 pops out with a gun. And he goes, give me all your shit, give me all your shit. And I'm just like, it's weird what happens to you in a situation like that. But like, there was like Holy no cow. adrenaline, nothing. I just talked to him super calmly. I'm like, absolutely, here you go. And like, I like take the camera off, I give it to him. He's like shaking, he has a gun in his hand. And I'm like, clearly this is an initiation. There's a bunch of older guys in the car. They look like they're like 10, 20 years older than this kid. I think he's gonna shoot me on accident, not on purpose. Yeah. So I'm just trying to calm him down. My like number one thing is be like, dude, it's cool. You can have everything you want, just chill. And he's just like shaking, has gun like, and I have to like break it down for him. And when I start like unhooking the J hook and like start pulling it down, so <laughs> a, a bigger dude pops out. And he's like, get the back and like pulls a gun on me. So I have two dudes like with guns and I'm just like, holy cow. Whoa, like it's cool. I'm trying to help you rob me. And like, like I just step <laughs> back and I just see like <laughs> this kid and this dude, like like they basically threw my light stand with the battery pack, like, like a mess, like a surfboard on top of the car and just drove off with this $2,000 battery pack dangling like a like a square yo-yo. Oh man. Like, like while these guys just like drove off and like me and my two of my friends are just like, 
Like, I'm just like sitting there stunned. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, are there more of them? Are Holy they going to try cow. to steal my car next? No, they just drove off. And this all happened at like 11 a.m. in broad daylight. That's the story of my strobes in Richmond. Um, they're gone. <laughs> that is insane. That is a sketchy story. Holy it was terrifying. Crap. There yeah. was a gun at like this close to me. Like, right. this kid was like shaking. And like, honestly, I felt bad for the kid. I looked at him and I was just like, Dude, like that sucks. That's your life, you know. That's yeah. like that's some real shit. Like that's that's I don't know what that's gonna lead to, but like you know, you're this young and like and you're doing some hardcore shit. Gnarly, holy crap! Gnarly, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm like almost twice your age, dude. And like you're right, <laughs> just yeah. pulled a gun on me. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's crap, man. That is that is insane. Yeah, and like I, dude, so crazy. Like it was like I was completely like ice water in the veins. Like so cool about it, and like not even like worked up like i've been more worked up like formatting a card on accident like <laughs> than that you know what i mean like, I, like that was yeah. like dude i got my body shut off like i and i but i don't remember a lot of pieces like when i had to talk to the cops what color was a car like, no idea i just remember right. the color of the barrel is black like, <laughs> like i was looking at the gun and i was like that's all i can see is like this kid and the gun like it was like at F two eight. I was just like really focused on that. Like, <laughs> whoa, you know? <laughs> Dang, that's that's a crazy story. You ever have times when you're like packing up after a shoot and people are like, "Here, let me help you." And they have no idea which yeah. case it goes on. Then they start wrapping up cables wrong and everything. He's like, oh "No, no, no, just God. just don't don't touch it." It's funny because they're like trying to be nice, yeah. But it's like they'll they'll take a C stand and they'll try to figure out how to fold it oh up. And it's God. just like there's a very precise way I like to fold up my C stands, guys. <laughs> or when they do it and it looks good, but nothing's tightened so it's like a home alone mobile trap <laughs> and you're just like dropping it on your foot and like things oh, are falling yeah, out of place you're yeah. like dude righty tidy man like yeah. what happened if you want to pick up the sandbags go for it <laughs> <laughs> yeah see all those sandbags just carry them <laughs> to the truck anyways thanks again to ryan for coming over and giving us a little bit of an insight into his life let's close this off by me proving to you that i can in fact do a kickflip my last video was about the Sigma art lens, f1.4. It was a 20 millimeter super wide angle lens that you could use for vlogging. That's an f1.4, crazy lens, super blurry backgrounds, good stuff. Top comment was from Vince. Oh damn, I shouldn't have decided to watch this while I ate my damn breakfast. Yes, there is a little bit of gore in my last video because I decided it'd be a great idea to go on a hike with jagged rocks with sandals. So apologize in advance. If you don't like gory stuff, maybe skip the intro to the last video. <laughs> Ruggles Photography says, Kerry walking over that bridge, stunning footage, looks absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you. Just because of that, I'm gonna upload this shot to Instagram. Beep, 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 beep. Uploaded. Kevin says, that shot always looks best when focused on Kerry. Well, what do you mean, Kevin? What's wrong with this face? You know how much maintenance this face takes to keep it so beautiful? Okay, I almost did the splits there. Ooh. You look like the boy from, no way, you look like General Fujita from Fists of Legends. Do you know who that is? I don't know, do I look like him? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I need some milk. Title of the video, the F1.4 full frame vlog lens. Lectures about how to protect yourself from a bear. <laughs> you just wait until you get attacked by a bear and remember exactly what to do because of that video, okay? Quick way to remember the difference between the two types of bears. If it's brown, get down. If it's black, fight back. That's good. That's a good one. Remember that.